Say hi to Mark Hackle for me, Steve. I sure will, Christy. Uh, Christy was referring to your famous billboard that uh, you put up every year on I-75 so that when we're coming up to Mackinac Island, we know what's on your mind before we know what's on everyone else's mind. Welcome to One Detroit, Mark. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. Yeah. So let's start with uh, what your billboard said. If I remember, it said something like, funding the roads doesn't necessarily mean fixing the roads or something something like that. Fix the funding, fix the fixes funding. the roads. Yeah, see, I got it right. <laughs> yeah, fix the funding, we'll fix the roads. And I say that because it's very simple messaging. And again, MacombGov.org, we did an asset management of all of our roads. We're the only county that has actually done it with an engineered study. We have two engineering firms to look at our roads, made a determination of the costs associated with the roads that are in poor condition and the bridges that are in poor condition in our subdivisions. People can go to this site and make a determination on any road in Macomb County, get an understanding in each community by community, the metrics and the costs associated with it. So the reason we say that is because we continue to admire the problem. Even as public officials, they want to talk about it, talk about tires being blown out and everything else. Well, we no longer have the, I guess, ability to continue to admire the problem. Now we got to figure out how do we fund it, and that's a solution that we're hoping the legislature starts taking very serious, and I think they will. But with that being said, it's got to be a real solution with real funding because now I'm going to know whatever it is they do, even if it washes through Act 51, what the amount comes to Macomb County, and will that amount that I'm going to get have an impact on starting to turn the percentage of roads that have been going in a negative direction into a positive direction at some point in time. Even if it's a two, 3% change by year, mm -hmm. I'll be satisfied with that because we can at least tell people they're getting better. But right now, we can't tell them that. So, so what do you make of the proposal that's on the table from the governor, 45 cents more per gallon of gas? Uh, she says that'll raise two and a half billion dollars or, or thereabouts that would uh, fix the roads and keep them in better condition going forward, is that is that the right solution? You know, it's interesting because I, I, it's another solution. And that's, aside from admiring the problem, we've been admiring solutions. Yeah. Whether it's talking about, you know, changing Act 51, talking about pulling out the vehicle registrations, you know, pot for potholes, is it in the catastrophic fund, sales tax, gas tax, proposal one, we've talked about everything. And with that being said, I at least give this governor credit uh, for doing what she's doing. Gretchen is uh, on top of it, offering another solution because it doesn't seem nobody, anybody wants to pick one of the others and move forward with real funding with those other solutions that are possibilities. So she puts it on the table and there's a lot of criticism. No different than our, our former governor, Snyder. He did the same thing. Proposal one was what they came out with finally. He was the only one spearheading that charge to say we need to do this and it failed miserably. So many solutions have been put on the table but we continue to admire them as a legislature and I don't think we have that luxury anymore of doing that. We've got to figure out a solution. If they don't like the governor's plan, they need to come up with another one with true funding. So to answer your question directly, do I like the plan? I think the plan does help us with a lessening the impact of deterioration, but it's not giving us the positive impact moving forward. So, yeah, I'll support it because, once again, it's something that helps soften that, I guess, impact. But I'm hoping maybe somebody can uh, meet her halfway and find a better solution that says, you know what, here's one we can agree upon because it doesn't seem like that one's getting a lot of traction. So, yeah, I was going to say that the biggest problem with that proposal seems to be popular support, which is very, very low and much lower than I uh, anticipated it would be. It seems like the selling job she has to do is with the public, uh, at least as much as the legislature. Yeah, and you know, I think it's like anything. If you've got to educate people and it takes a while to figure out how to explain it to them or whatever, you're going to lose the argument. And I think that's what's taking place here. To her credit, I think she was solving a couple things at the same time. One is the tax structure to get people to realize we want to make sure our funding is going directly where we say it's going to go. And people have been complaining about that for a long time. But it's a very complex process. One, she tried to simplify, but sometimes in that uh, conversation, it gets lost. You, you know, them. you do. And so with that being said, she's on the right track. Um, I'm hoping there's, a, a, I guess, a compromise here that does two things. One is comes up with true road funding, but also does what the people are expecting. Fix the tax structure so we trust if you need more money, we know if we say yes to that, it's going to go directly to that. So it's got to be a pure funding proposal for roads. Unlike Proposal 1, it wasn't a pure funding proposal for roads. It was another mixed message, and people said no to that. Uh, of course, up here on Mackinac, we always talk about regionalism in southeast Michigan. Uh, Brooks Patterson is not with us uh, this, this time. Wayne, uh, Warren Evans uh, has been around a little bit, but I guess he's sick. Um, talk about where we are with some of the regional issues that come up up here all the time. Transit, of course, is the big one. Uh, we haven't heard much about transit this year on the island. Yeah, I think that impact it might have had on the vote dealing with SMART was uh, somewhat uh, concerning to uh, many. And I told them that was coming. I could see it from the voters in Macomb County. So I think what they're trying to figure out is, okay, maybe there is a taxing equity thing we need to look at. I think what you've got is the opt-out communities in Wayne County and Oakland County are what their concern is, is how do we get them bought in 
into the system because Mo Macomb has always been all in on transit, but we almost lost that vote because of this idea that, well, let's add another 1.5 mil to the mill you're already paying. That would have been a taxing inequity and people were like, wait a minute, we're not paying 2.5 total when other communities are going to pay 1.5. How do we fix that? So I think there's been a lot of conversation about that. You know, I, I'm very encouraged by it. Uh, you know, they, I, I tend to look at those that are leading right now, the RTA. Uh, Paul Hilligans is doing a great job. Matt Webb, we just had conversations with him while we were up here to see if this new possibility of legislation can help resolve some of those opt-outs in those other counties and bring them into the system without there being a tax inequity amongst those that are already or always have been part of the regional system. Uh, do you think that uh, the solution has to maybe roll SMART and DDOT up into RTA? Something we've kind of talked about as a distant future idea, but maybe that's the thing that gets people in Macomb uh, in Oakland to say, all right, I'll, I can get behind this because it's, it's one tax for one service. Steve, I've been an advocate that from day one. And even I remember when I first became county executive and I was sitting alongside Dave Bing when he happened to be the, uh, the mayor at that point in time. And I said that. I said, why aren't we building upon the smart system right now? In fact, let's bring those opt-out communities opting in and let's see if we can't have some kind of a merger with DDOT. And there is a good working relationship right now with DDOT and smart, and smart and make it smart plus or something, whatever we want to call it. You know. And so with that being said, I do believe there is an option there, an opportunity, and there's more dialogue in that, uh, I guess, in that, in that vein. So I'm, I'm I'm actually pleased to see that. I think we're starting to move in a better direction. That could be something that could be amenable to all. Uh, I want to ask you about PFAS. Uh, one of the big sites for PFAS pollution is Selfridge Air Base, which is in Macomb County. Uh, there's, there's new talk about how we get this cleaned up, and especially how we get the government uh, to clean up sites that they own that are contaminated with this chemical. Yeah, and you hit it right on. I mean, that's a government responsibility, and when I say government, we're talking about at a, at a state and national level. So Selfridge Air Base happens to be one of many sites, not just in Michigan, but across the country, that are being looked at and make a determination, what are we doing, and uh, how, do we, how do we remediate this problem? So I do know there has been work on our legislatures, uh, both statewide and federally, to try to figure out what would be the best uh, mechanism moving forward. Uh, they're being cautious about how they move forward with this or proceeding, but I know there's been an effort to try to figure out how do they mitigate to remediate that particular problem. All right, Mark Hackle, always great to see you Thanks, up here on Mackinac Island. Thank you. Back to you, Christy. All right, Stephen, but before you, before you go, can yeah. I ask you, you've got to give me a weather report from the porch. It looks warm. Is it a mirage? Uh, weather report from the porch. Mark, what would you say? Perfect? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we brought our balmy 70-80 uh, degree weather from Macomb <laughs> County, Michigan, up here to Mackinac Island, because it's, it's always a balmy 70-80 degrees in Macomb County. Right? You're it, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 